Hey guys, and welcome back to a new Android video. You wanted hardware tutorials and you will get hardware tutorials because in this video, you will learn about the Camera X library on how you can integrate a camera feed directly into your app. And this will look something like this, that you can really see directly inside of your Android device how messy your workplace is at home and how bad you are at cable management. But you can also luckily switch the camera so you don't even need to look at that. As you can see, we can then hit the middle button to take a photo and all these photos will appear in a little gallery we have here that is only an in-app gallery, so not a real uh, stored gallery on the, on the device's storage. I'll explain in a moment why I decided to do so, but what you can also do is you can record a video with the bottom right button and then that will actually be stored on the user's device. And this will not only be one video, these will be three videos which will all be related to Camera X and will cover the core functionality of it. So in the first video, you will learn how you can actually integrate this camera feed into your app, how you can take photos and then display these photos. In the next video, you will then learn how you can capture videos with Camera X and then last but not least, which will probably be the coolest power, so definitely watch till then, we will integrate AI into our app. So you will really learn something about image analyzing and image processing that we really go through frame by frame, analyze these with an AI model in order to recognize landmarks in your personal country. But in order to get there, you just need to learn a bit about the camera X basics so we can do something very cool with it at the end. And if you want to follow along, yeah, then let's dive into Android Studio. Please take a look at the GitHub repository, which I've linked in the description because that includes some initial dependencies we're going to need. On the one hand, this extended material icons one, so we can just get more different material icons for our app. But most importantly, this camera X dependencies which I've included here. Make sure to use the same version as I do so you can follow along. And before I want to start some code, I want to talk about when you actually need Camera X for your app. So if you have an app where the user needs to take a photo, for example, which you need in the app afterwards, or you have an app where the user needs to record a video, then in and of itself, you don't need Camera X. No, you can just do that with an activity result because your user likely has a camera app on their device. Your user likely has an app on their device they can record a video with. So you can just launch or let the user launch this other app, record the video and then get the video in your app. So if that's all you need, ignore camera X. That also has the advantage that you don't need to request any camera record audio permission directly in your app because it's only the other app that requires these permissions. But when do you need camera X then? Camera X is needed whenever you need to directly integrate a camera feed into your app. So think of Instagram, for example, where you can just record Instagram stories directly in the app. Instagram does not launch your device's camera app because then that would be pretty bad because the user needs to leave the Instagram app in order to record a video. No, they want to keep the users in the app for as long as possible. So they have an integrated camera which they have full control over. So you can add filters, you can change the audio, maybe for a video recording, you can add stickers. All that is only possible if you integrate it with a Camera X directly, at least on the Android side. Or at least a comparable way, there are older versions of Camera X, which are Camera and Camera 2, but Camera X is the newest one. So whenever you want full access over the device's camera inside of your app and you don't want the user to leave the app, then follow this video because uh, this will be crucial to learn how to implement this. But I think I talked enough, let's dive into coding. And the first thing we need are of course permissions. We are on Android, we need permissions and especially for camera and recording audio, we need runtime permissions. We need explicit approval from the user for that. And in order to do that, we first of all need to declare these in our manifest. So right up here, we say we have a user's permission on the one hand for the camera access. And let's also include the one for recording audio so I don't forget it in the next video. But obviously, for taking a photo, we, we don't need this record audio permission just for making a video. We can then hover over this user's permission because Android Studio also wants us to add this user's feature tag, which just declares, hey, well, we have an app that requires the app's camera. This might be helpful at some point when your app is in Google Play, so users can see which features and which hardware your app requires. But that's already enough for the manifest. Let's dive into main activity. And here, we first of all want to request these permissions. For that, I want to have a little companion object in which we specify which permissions we have. So, I don't know, camera X permissions, for example, which is just an array of, on the one hand, from manifest, make sure to use the Android one, manifest.permission camera, and one for recording audio. These are the permissions we want to request, and we can then have a function 
we can use to check whether we have these permissions or not. So private function has required permissions, obviously return a boolean, and then we're going to return camera x permissions that all, so we will go over all these permissions in this array, and we now want to check if we do have each single permission. So context combat, check self permission, we can pass our replication context, and we want to pass the permission we want to check if we have it, and then check if that's actually equal to package manager, whoops, package manager, adopt permission granted. If that's the case for all these permissions in our array, then we know we have the required permissions. So I wanted to go up here and on create, check if we don't have the required permissions, because in that case, we want to request these, of course. And we do this with activity combat, request permissions, and we say this for the activity. We pass our camera X permissions, so we will request all these, and the request code is uh, whatever you want to use here. One little note here, this is of course not a real permission handling like you would do in, an, in a normal app with a permission rational, with also handling when the user declines that. That is a whole topic on its own on Android. I have a separate video about that. But here I really want to keep the video focused on camera X. So we just assume that the user accepts these permissions. But if you maybe want me to make a real camera app at some point with more features, which is just a full app which deals with these things like permission handling, which also stores the images on a real device, on the real storage, then just let me know that in the comments what kind of app you would like to see that requires camera X. And I would be very happy to do it at some point. So what is now the first thing we want to do here for Array UI? Now we know we have the permissions, so we can start implementing our camera feed. And if we take a look here in the app, where you can see my beautiful lamp, but uh, apart from this lamp, what I also want to have is a so-called bottom sheet scaffold, because the gallery, I've implemented that with a little bottom sheet here, and that of course needs a scaffold to be attached to. And that is what we're going to start with. So we will have a bottom sheet scaffold and here we first of all have the sheet content so the content we want to have on the bottom sheet we will get to that in a moment we also want to attach a scaffold state so let's have a scaffold state which is equal to remember bottom sheet scaffold state and i think we need to add this experimental annotation like with everything in android so i'll enter and add that and then we can add this scaffold state here in our function and by default, this bottom sheet actually peaks a little bit, which I don't want, so I don't want that it peaks by default. So we want to set the sheet peak height to 0 dp, like this. Then the scaffold, of course, has some content here, where we also get some padding, padding values, which we can apply to the root composable here in this um, bottom sheet scaffold. And what do we now want to put in here? If we take a look at our app, then I actually just want to have a box which is the root composable of our screen. In this box, we will put this so-called preview view, which uh, just shows the camera feed. And then we can take a look at the icons. So we want to arrange one icon at the top left and the other ones in a row at the bottom. So that is how this will work. Pretty simple UI. Let's get started with creating this box. The modifier is modifier fill max size, of course, we want to fill the whole screen. And then we can add the padding, which we get from our bottom sheet scaffold. All right, so what needs to be inside this box? First of all, what we want to have is, of course, our preview feed. And I think that is uh, what excites you the most because that is the core of Camera X. Camera X does not support Jetpack Compose out of the box yet, but we can very easily still use it with the help of the Android View Composable. So what we want to do is we want to go to our root package, create a new Kotlin file called Camera Preview, for example. Make that a file create a composable in here, call that uh, camera preview. And what does that need in form of parameters? On the one hand, we want to have a so-called controller, which is a lifecycle camera controller. And this will really be the core of our camera X feed, because with this controller, we can completely control what is displayed, so front camera, back camera, what we do without taking a photo, capturing a video. So we need to pass that and link this to the preview view, which we will implement in here. And then we want to have a modifier just as usual. And this will actually not be a lot of code. So we just want to have an Android view, which is needed when we want to have an older view. So from the XML view system, and we want to use that in Jetpack Compose. Then we use a factory, which is just a Lambda, in which we create that older view, which in this case is a preview view. You can see that comes from the camera library. 
And here we can pass it, so the context in order to create that. We can then say apply to apply some changes to this view. On the one hand, we want to link this uh, controller we passed. So this, so the preview view, that controller is equal to the controller we passed. And then we say a controller that bind to lifecycle, which will then also listen to lifecycle changes um, to properly show the camera or free it up when it's not needed anymore. And here we need to pass lifecycle owner. We can get that on a composable up here by saying, well, lifecycle owner is equal to local lifecycle owner dot current. And then we pass that in here. We also want to make sure that we pass in the modifier. And that's it. That's how we can use the camera feed in Jetpack Compose. Of course, you can do much more customizations here. You can see um, there, there are a lot of fields which we don't need here. Um, so if you need some customizations, take a look at this preview view. You can configure it here. And also make sure that in case something, you, you use something in this Android view composable which could update that would have an effect on the preview view, then you also want to override or rather uh, use the, oops, the update lambda, which will be triggered when there is a change in compose state in order to also update the preview view. But here, our lifecycle camera controller will never change at least during one life cycle. So we don't really need that and reattach it and these kinds of things. Okay, let's go back to main activity and then implement our camera preview here. Now we of course need to pass this lifecycle camera controller. For that, I want to go up here and create this well, controller. We want to put this in a rem remember block so um, that does not get recreated on every recomposition that would be terrible. And in here, we would have a lifecycle camera controller, which requires the context. So you can just pass the context. If you are not in the activity, you can of course also get the context before with a local context current. And then, whoops, we also want to say apply here. And what we want to do is we want to say set use cases, set enabled use cases. So with this function, we basically enable everything we want to be able to use in, in combination with this preview feed. So there are three of these use cases in total. On the one hand, taking a picture. On the other hand, capturing a video. And on the other hand, performing some image analysis. And I would recommend to only enable what you really need. So in our case here, this is a camera controller dot image capture or camera control, oops, camera controller dot video capture. We're not going to need any image analysis. That is what we will do in the separate app for uh, what I mentioned with AI, where we will really process frame by frame and check if we can recognize some kind of landmark on it. But that will be a separate app and not be done in, inside of this one here. Cool, now we have a controller, which you can pass here like this. And the modifier would of course modifier fill max size. And if we launch this, we should already be able to see some form of camera feed. We won't be able to switch the cameras yet, we won't be able to take a photo yet, and especially not see any photos, uh, but we should be able to see a camera feed. After accepting the permissions, of course, that is something we need to do initially. You can see, just while using the app, while using the app, and then after we relaunch the app, we should now always have access to the permissions. So as you can see, there is our camera feed. Very cool. Let's move on. The next thing I'd like to do is to have the button to switch the cameras, which we can put below this camera preview. That'll just be an icon button. And when we click on this, we want to switch the camera. We also want to have content for this, of course, which is just, whoops, which is just an icon mm, that takes in an image vector. That will be icons, default, camera switch. Content description can be, I don't know, switch camera. And when we click on this, we can get access to our controller and actually change the camera selector to, well, if we are currently seeing the front camera, we want to switch to the back camera and vice versa. So if the controller camera selector is equal to camera controller back camera. Then we want to switch to camera selector front camera and else camera selector back camera. That is what we want to do. 
Um, I also like to offset this a little bit so it's not completely in the top left. So modifier is modifier dot offset. And we offset this by 16 dp and 16 dp. If we then relaunch this, we should be able to see that we can switch our camera. You can see there is our button. And if I click this, then huh, there I am. Very cool. You can see how easy that actually can be done. Let's next take a look at how we can take a photo. And for that, I want to go below this switch camera button and add a row, which will be displayed at the bottom of our box. So modifier, modifier fill max width. We want to align it at the bottom center and we want to add some padding of let's say 16 dp. And this row will actually on the one hand have a horizontal arrangement of arrangement dot space around. So we just distribute the icon buttons a little bit. And in here we can then add an icon button on the one hand for our gallery to open our bottom sheet. So here on click and this will have an icon image vector icons default photo and the content description will be open gallery something like this and then we can take this button copy it paste it down here and this will be to take a photo so the icon will be photo camera and the content description will be take photo when we click this photo camera button what do we want to do? Well, for that, I want to make a little helper function because that's a bit more code than just switching the camera. So let's add this down here. Private function take photo. This needs our controller. So I'm to pass this here. And this also takes um, a lambda on photo taken. This lambda will give us the photo in form of a bitmap and we can then do whatever we want with it. And in here, in the end, that's really only just a one function call, but we need to pass a call back to that, which requires some more lines. So I want to say controller that take picture. Here for most of these camera X related functions, we need to pass a so-called executor, which just contains information about which thread this is going to be executed on. Here we can pretty much always just pass context compat, get main executor for these UI related things. And we pass in application context and then here for the second parameter, we need a callback, which is an on image captured callback like this. And in here, we can now react to whatever happened on the one hand. So I hit command O, by the way, control O. Uh, in the end, we want to be able to react to success events and error events. So when capturing the image was a success, we get this here in, in form of an image proxy. So that just contains some more information about the image, like the rotation. And we could now say on photo taken, we pass in our image, which is not a bitmap yet, but there is a function to bitmap. And then we have that image as a bitmap. If there is an error, we can also just uh, say log.e. We say, I don't know, camera as a tag. And then we say, uh, couldn't take photo and we pass in our exception. So that should already be enough to take a photo, but uh, it doesn't help us if we can take a photo but not display it, then we still don't see that everything worked. So we also need to implement our little preview, which we can do in a separate composable. So photo bottom sheet content, just a new file like this. And this will take in a list of bitmaps we want to display in the bottom sheet content, like this, and a modifier as usual. Cool. Inside here, this will be nothing else than a lazy staggered, lazy vertical staggered grid. And the columns are staggered grid cells dot fixed. So we want to have two columns of photos. And let's also add some spacing between these photos. So horizontal arrangement is arrangement spaced by 16 dp. Alt enter to import dp. The vertical item spacing should be 16 dp as well. And the padding values, or the content padding will be padding values 16 dp. 
So this will be the horizontal spacing, vertical spacing, and the padding at the very um, uh, at, the, at the very edges of this lazy vertical staggered grid. We then want to pass in our modifier, and here we can then just have an items block that takes in a list of items, and for each bitmap, we want to have one item, whoops, which will just be an image composable that takes in an image bitmap. So the bitmap is equal to our bitmap as image bitmap. So we convert that Android bitmap to a composed bitmap. And then the content description can be null here. And I just want to clip this a little bit so it looks nicer. So the modifier is modify clip. Modify a clip, rounded corner shape, and pass in 10 dp. If this list is empty, I would like to display a little text. So if bitmaps is empty, then we just want to have a little box. Modifier is modifier.padding, 16 dp for example. We say the content alignment is center, and in this box we then display the text. So text. Um, no photos have, or there are no photos yet. And else, so if there are photos, we do display our lazy standard grid. Cool, that, that's our bottom sheet content, which you can use in main activity. Here for the sheet content, photo bottom sheet content, bitmaps is, uh, well, uh, where do we get our bitmaps list from? That's actually the only state we really need in our app. So that's create a little view model for that. So it also survives screen rotations. New file, main view model, view model. And in here, I will use a state flow underscore bitmaps, mutable state flow, which contains an empty list by default, which is a list of bitmap. And then we have a public version of that, which is underscore bitmaps as state flow. And if we then take a photo on take photo, we get a new bitmap, which we want to add to this state flow. So bitmaps.value plus equals or new bitmap. Then we update our state, this will update our list, and then we see this in our bottom sheet as well. So here, let's get a reference to, whoops, oh, what was that? <laughs> let's get a reference to our view model is equal to view model. We don't have the composable for that. We could initialize the view model here in our activity, but I would like to add the dependency for that. Let's go to build at Gradle module app. Duplicate one of these dependencies here, and I think we should get suggestions for that. I think that is life's, uh, Android X life cycle. Uh, runtime life data, or is it view model? Here, this Android X lifecycle view model compose dependency. Let's add that, let's synchronize, and then we should have access to initializing a view model in a composable. Let's take a look. Um, is it this one? Um, because it doesn't highlight that as a composable. This should be a main view model. Yes, but that seems to work. Yes, that's a composable function, very cool. So now we can use this. Um, to get the bitmap state by view model bitmaps collect as state. We could also um, actually use collect as state with lifecycle, which would be even more correct. Um, but I don't want to add another dependency here. I have a separate video about that explaining what that would do. In this case, actually nothing. Let's add our bitmap state to our photo bottom sheet content. Do we need something else? I don't think so. Maybe just make sure that we fill the whole width um, with the modifier. Film X width. And that should be everything to display photos. We now, of course, need to trigger our take photo function for icon button. Um, actually, not this one, this one here. When we take a photo, I want to say take photo. The controller is just our controller we passed. And the on photo taken lambda will be delegated to our review model on take photo, which will then update our state, that will update our list, and everyone is happy. We also need to open our bottom sheet. For that, we need a little coroutine scope, otherwise that won't work. 
So valve scope, remember coroutine scope. And with a scope, we can then open the bottom sheet. So scope that launch. And we say bottom sheet, um, what is it? So a scaffold state, bottom sheet state dot expand when we click this button. And I think this should be everything we need in order to take photos and to see which photos we've taken. So if we launch this app and take a look in here, there we are. Oh, no, there we are. Cool. We do have our switch camera button, which we've tried before. That still works. We can open our bottom sheet. It tells us there are no photos yet. And if we take a photo, click here, then nothing crashes. That is good. If we open this, then there is our photo. But you will notice uh, this actually rotated. So we've taken a photo here in portrait mode, but this is effectively landscape mode. So we actually need to rotate that. But how do we do that? Previously, I've taught you that with this image proxy down here, we also get access to the rotation degrees of that photo. So we can see image dot image info dot rotation degrees. We can now use that to rotate the image. Yeah, so that we can actually also see how it really looks like. How do we do that? We just need to create another bitmap here in this on capture success lambda or function. And for that, we can use a so called matrix sounds super complex, but uh, it's in the end, just something we can use to um, transform an image. And it's really simple in the end. So is equal to a new matrix and we want to apply posting a rotate. So we just want to rotate all the numbers in that matrix based on our rotation degrees. So image, image info, rotation degrees, dot to float. And then we can use this matrix to get a rotated bitmap, which is bitmap.create. And here we have tons of overloads. We want the overload that takes in a matrix, this one here. So we say, okay, first of all, the bitmap we want to rotate is image to bitmap, then x is zero, y is zero, the height is uh, the width is image at width, and the height is image dot height. The matrix is our matrix, and the filter can just be true. And there we go, we have our rotated bitmap, which you can then pass to a lambda, rotated bitmap. And if we now try this again, take a look here, then we should see uh, that we do have a fine rotation. Let's again take the same photo like this, open this, and you can see now it's actually also in the same format we recorded it in. You can see it's actually mirrored. If, if you don't want that for the front camera, you can also use this matrix to post a scale and say you want to scale it based on the factor minus 1f and 1f. So this would mirror it on the x-axis, but not on the y-axis. But that's only a problem for the front camera. If you use the back camera, that is not an issue anymore. So you would also need to check what the what kind of camera the controller is currently using. Feel free to play around with that at home. I leave it as it is. I'm happy that we have a camera app here and that we can see some photos. Let's also try what happens if we switch the camera again and have a very cool photo here. Open that, works well. If we rotate our device, then take a photo, we should also be able to see everything right here. Yes, and you can see that was actually in landscape mode. So very cool. Awesome, awesome. We are able to take photos directly inside of our app, but we're not done yet because in the next video, you will learn how you can record videos with the same setup. Definitely don't miss that. And if you are interested in more advanced Android premium courses, which will really prepare you for the industry as an Android developer, then check the first link in this video's description because I have a bunch of these courses where I really package all my Android related knowledge together so you can get prepared in the fastest time possible. Thanks for watching. You'll find the final source code below as well. And I will see you back in the next video about recording videos. And then finally, we'll get to AI. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye.